Driving at Home with Avor's housing economist, Claire Losey. Hey, everybody. We're back with the Driving at Home podcast here at the Austin Board of Realtors. I'm Kalea Youngblood, your Chief Marketing Officer, stepping in for Emily, who is out working with our task force today. So we are excited to be here with Dr. Claire Losey, our housing economist, who is going to give us a rundown on our June market stats. Hey, Claire, thanks for joining us today. Hey, Kalea, thanks for having me. So we're going to get right to it because we've got some big highlights stemming from our June market stats that were dropped last Thursday. And I know you're going to give us a deep dive, but you know one of the interesting things that came from this market stats is that essentially we are finally in a true apples to apples comparison year over year with it being a full year since interest rates began to rise. So why don't you kick us off with that and and give us what we need to know from these latest market stats. Right. So as listeners will probably remember, mortgage rates started to rise in March of last year. However, in the Austin MSA, we actually reached peak median sales price in April and May of last year. It was $550,000 for both months. And then in June is when we really started to see that moderation in both prices and sales from higher mortgage rates beginning to creep into the market. So moving into last month's housing stats, as you mentioned, Clea, it's really now more of an apples to apples year over year comparison. Gotcha. And so essentially the market has remained fairly robust. Is that true? Yes. So essentially what we saw in June is that the median sales price was $483,000. So that's a decline of about 10% on a year over year basis, but an uptick of a modest 3% from May of this year. And then two, we did see a little bit of moderation on the sales front, which measured about $3,150 in June, a moderation of about 9% on a year over year basis and 13 percent on a month over month basis. So certainly down on that front, but largely precipitated by the uptick in the mortgage rate, which increased from about 6.4% in May to more like 6.7% in June. And two, just as a little bit more context, the, the mortgage rate has slowly crept up over the course of 2023, really, especially this spring. So that's posed a little bit of a drag on on sales activity. And then meanwhile, months of inventory has remained consistently in a higher range, kind of in the mid to high three range, which indicates that the market is more balanced than it has been previously. And actually on a seasonally adjusted basis over the past several months, the months of inventory has reached really an 11 year high. So Overall, while we're still relatively in a seller's market, we are beginning to see that the supply of homes for sale in the market is becoming more commensurate with the ensuing demand for homes. So essentially, the headline there is that buyers have some leverage and maybe can take you know a breath when it comes to determining what they want, you know, being a little bit more uh, picky on what they're desiring with regards to location or size or work from home lifestyle, et cetera. So that's an interesting turn and something that agents need to be kind of aware of and I'm sure are feeling out in the marketplace as well with regards to the the sellers maybe having a little bit more time on the market than they're used to. Talk to us a little bit about pending sales. I know we had talked prior to our podcast here about, you know, the difference of month over month. Tell us a little bit about that. Sure. So pending sales actually ticked up a very robust near 20% on a year-over-year basis. So again, just pointing back to the lagged effect of higher mortgage rates really appearing in June of last year in the housing market. So essentially what we're seeing is that buyers are becoming more comfortable with higher rates on average However, the story in June is that, again, while buyers are a little bit more comfortable with the higher rate environment and a little bit more willing to move, the uptick in rates in June still posed a little bit of a drag. 
So while we saw that really large uptick in pending sales on a year-over-year basis, we saw a much more modest uptick in pending sales on a month-over-month basis of about 0.5%. So all in all, you know, again, buyers are adjusting to kind of this new normal, but are still a little bit hesitant amid the uptick in rates. So I'm going to put you on the spot a little bit, Claire. I know we didn't prep for this, but, you know, the burning question is, what can we expect with interest rates? You know, we're going into the second half of the year. I think everybody's just got a little anxiety over this, both on the buyer and the seller side, and certainly on the agent side. What do you foresee for the second half of the year with regards to interest rates? So it's going to be largely dependent on the continued movement by the Federal Reserve. And it's broadly anticipated that the Federal Reserve will raise its federal funds rate at least one more time. Probably over the next couple of weeks, they meet in late July. So they'll probably raise the federal funds rate another 0.25 percentage points at that meeting which could drive mortgage rates up slightly in the near term. However, given the recent data that we've seen coming through on inflation, i.e. inflation decelerated in June, continued to decelerate in June, measuring about 3% on a year-over-year basis, so closer to the Fed's 2% inflation target, As that data has trickled through, it's indicating that the Fed is more likely to pause, you know, to discontinue their their rate hikes. And so should that happen, then we will see some easing on pressures that would otherwise push up mortgage rates. And so we would anticipate that over the course of 2023, over the latter half of 2023, that mortgage rates should slowly should gradually begin to decline, perhaps into the low six range. But again, really the the question on the table is, what will the Federal Reserve do? And then, of course, um, how will that affect mortgage rates? Okay. Well, thanks for that. I know it's it's kind of a crystal ball looking into the crystal ball, but I know that's what everybody is really wanting to know and sort of what, is, what do they tell their clients, you know, when, when it's, they're trying to get them off the fence or their clients have a little anxiety over this interest rate issue. So thanks for that. Let's move on to our week over week, you know, recap or what we saw last week and what we can expect for next week. Sure. So we saw certainly more robust sales on a week over week basis, which is Broadly to be anticipated, just given the July 4th holiday almost two weeks ago now, of course, you know, we lost a full business day that week and potentially two business days just given people on vacation and whatnot. So closed sales in the MSA ticked up 34%. And then we saw an uptick as well in new listings of about 42%. So overall, in in, in an increase in pending sales of about 21%. So again, overall, just a more, much more robust week this past week. And then meanwhile, on the leasing side, we saw an uptick in closed leases of about 33%, and then an uptick in pending leases of 24%. So certainly more movement in the market. And we'll probably see a little bit of a slowdown in the percent change, percentage change on a week over week basis next week, right? As we'll be comparing kind of two normal weeks to each other right now. This current week, we're comparing a more normal week of activity last week to, you know, a, a reduced rate of activity the week of July 4th. So moving forward, we should see a little bit more stabilization in the numbers and their percentage change on a week over week basis, especially as we move out of, you know, the summer holiday season and and folks are kind of returning back to work, back to school, et cetera. Yeah, I was just gonna say it's it's like three or four more weeks until back to school. It's hard to believe. So hopefully we'll see some activity as people settle in and recognize that they've got some decisions to make before school starts. So That's great. And then, you know, what is the headline that realtors can use with their clients to help them understand that it's still a great time to plant your flag in Austin? So I would think just overall, the strong fundamentals 
We have in the region, of course, very strong population and jobs growth, a high-performing regional economy. Our economic activity continues to outpace even that of Texas, which is well-recognized as one of the states with the strongest economies in the U.S. So just the strong demand-side fundamentals moving forward, anticipated, robust population and jobs growth indicates that the demand for homeownership will remain robust into the foreseeable future. And then two, just the sheer fact that homeownership remains the primary mechanism by which households in the U.S. build wealth. And we'll cover that more at our Central Texas Housing Summit on July 26th. But that's really just something that research shows time and again, that homeownership is crucial for households to be able to build wealth. Well, you beat me to it. Thanks for the plug for the July Housing Summit. If you haven't registered, it's on our website, abor.com. You'll see it on the homepage. Also, our market stats are on the homepage. If you missed them, please go in and do a deep dive. If you have any questions or you'd like to hear us talk about something specific, please email communications at abor.com. And you can hear more from Dr. Claire Losey at the Housing Summit. So thanks again for being with us this week. And happy selling season, everyone. We'll see you next week. Thanks, guys. Take care.